six thirty, and we're going to call it together. <laughs> okay, uh, we will start with the regular business meeting this evening for the Board of Education, July third, which is a Tuesday. Unusual. Never done that one before. Twenty eighteen, and we will start with roll call. Colburn here. Coleman here. Slider here. Hegmeister here. Herman here. Lewison here. Edie here. All present. Adoption of agenda. Four of us. Oh. Okay. I move to adopt the agenda. Second. No adjustments or anything. Okay. Uh, motion and second. Any comments about the agenda? Hearing none. All those in favor, right hand. Motion passes seven zero. Pledge of Allegiance. Please all stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, my last official action as president. Now we will go on to the election of board officers. Do we have any motions for president? Mr. President, I nominate Kurt Herman for president. Katrina? Mr. President, I nominate Carla Hagemeister for vice president. We want to do president. We'll, we'll do president. Oh, president. first. <laughs> Can't recall. We need a second on that. Or is it just a nomination? Just a nomination. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could always have a motion to close nominations. Mr. President, I move to close nominations. Okay. Uh, we have one. You need a second. Oh, we need a second. Oh, we need a second. Yeah, okay. A second. Oh, to close nominations? Did you get it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, Jardine, Jardine did. Okay, so we have a motion to have the railroad run over Kurt Herman to be president. What? On your motion to close. Oh, oh yeah, we got to vote the motion to close. Sorry, all those in favor of closing elections, raise right hand. Okay, motion passes seven zero. All right, now we can go back. You have to, we have to elect you. No, I do the. Oh, oh you do. I'm that? sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and all we need is <clears throat> one vote. <laughs> All those in favor of Kurt being president, right in. Motion passes <laughs> seven zero. Now we can switch. Right. <laughs> Actually, you just take over here. I want an iPad that's correct. You look happier than Kurt. <laughs> we'll get your names. Well, we'll switch those after we do the vice president because we've got the secondary plate. <laughs> Okay, guess now I will uh, accept nominations for Vice President. Mr. President, I nominate Carla Higgemeister for Vice President. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Dave? Mr. President, I nominate Jardine Coleman for Vice President. Okay. Any others? Okay, Daryl? I move that nomination cease. Okay. Second by Dave. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. So, since we have two people that are uh, candidates or been nominated for vice president, we will do a paper ballot. Um, not necessarily, I mean, we have to make it public how we voted, but we'll do a paper ballot. And then, because I think, you know, there's a tendency to maybe influence others on how you vote. So, we will. Do we have some? Oh, oh, thank you. Do that. <clears throat> Take one. Things are in the box if needed. Well, that's what. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you pass that down.
Did you have to announce <coughs> what the vote count was? Yes. Okay. Is that it? Send me that one. Oh. Okay, it is four to three with Carla being four with Katrina, Leah, Daryl, and Carla on that. And Jardine's three being Kurt, Dave, and Jardine. Okay, very good. Congratulations. So now you can slide over here. Trader. Or yeah, you can stay over there, I guess. Just trade uh, things. Thank you. If you can. If you can pass it down there, she gets that. Coming along. It's tricky. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll move on to the rest of the meeting. Um, we have no special recognitions tonight. I can tell by the the uh, population of the of the uh, visitors that we don't have any. Uh, Visitors or citizen comments. Um, so then we will move on to old business, um, the early learning reorganization. It's uh, Andy Turner. It's on page five, and that was a unanimous vote at our last meeting. And but I think we brought it back. Just I don't know. We didn't have a consent agenda item. Brought it back so, so that it, it was approved prior to consent. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Leah. Mr. President, I move to give final approval to the early learning organizational and personnel changes effective for the 2018-19 school year. Okay. Motion by Leah, seconded by Carla. All those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. Okay. Got my eraser on here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, so now we we have the consent agenda. Um, this is the time of the year. Well, we it's for the uh, 2000 <laughs> June 27 uh, minutes. Um, we also have an HR report. Um, there's a notable in there that I just wanted to mention. Um, by the way, we hired a lot of teachers mm -hmm. as of today, and uh, and then we also the one I want to point out we have a, one of our paras who's been here with us 33 years that is retiring. And that's amazing for a, for a para. We usually don't have them that long. So I think they're pretty important to our district. They work with some of our most fragile students. So um, that was uh, Deborah Bidwell Ring. So, um, then we also have our reorganization of the board. Or, and so we have our annual duty appointments. I'm not going to read these, um, they're all public information. and. If someone wants to volunteer to read them, speak up now or forever, okay. <laughs> um, so, and then we also have, it's an update to the district organizational chart, which is at the end of that. Um, briefly is our KSB memberships and our legal assistance fund. Uh, the vehicle mileage reimbursement rate, which is uh, in the uh, additional meeting information. Um, and then we also have um, the destruction of district financial records. Mr. President, uh, to avoid a possible conflict, I'm going to step out during the consent agenda. Okay, very good. Um, I think Carla has a. I also have, Mr. President, I move to. Are we there? Yes. Okay. Approve the consent agenda with the exception of item 7.5.3 adoption of official depositors for USD 383 district funds. Second by Jardine. Are those uh, any any comments from the audience? Uh, anything from the board? All those in favor? Motion passes six zero. I'm uh, excusing myself from uh, voting for the adoption of the official depositors because my bank is one of those uh, one of those facilities. So I will step out. Carla, you're in charge. I believe that just leaves us with item 7.5.3, the adoption of official depositors for USD 383 district funds. And I would entertain a motion to 
approve that if anybody has it. Dave. You're right. <laughs> yep. I move to approve those depositors. Second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Daryl. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. What, six. six zero. Welcome back, Kurt. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so it uh, takes us right into our uh, <laughs> spoken reports. Uh, we uh, first start off with Dr. Wade, as always. Okay. I'd like to start with the uh, STEM Summer Institute Showcase. I know several of the board members attended that, but I'd like Lacey to do a, a brief presentation for people in our audience who haven't had an opportunity to see the showcase. So Lacey. And it, it was wonderful, by the way. It, it was just, just a great opportunity to see the things that the, the students have done, not only our students, but the students from Kansas State that have been involved in and our staff that are involved. As Dr. Wade said, thank you for those um, of you that were able to attend. Uh, it was a great turnout, and we had used a um, Google slide this summer to capture all of our different classes and when I tried to put together about 500 slides into a very minimal slide deck um, this is the result of that so there may or may not be a class or two left out but that was completely unintentional so first of all um, I just want to go through the classes that we had in our fifth and sixth grade sessions and then those for our seventh and eighth and so I will be brief as um, the showcase on Friday did um, put a closure that we weren't ready for because we love STEM. But with that, I'll move forward. So these were our fifth and sixth grade STEM classes for our um, past summer. Solar construction. Music, music using STEM is cool. Here they had done some different instruments and work with sound designs and sound studios. Green Champs, this was a new class this year. Last week at the board meeting you heard Dr. Wade comment on the district um, being recipient of the Green Conservation Award. Courtney Smith was the teacher of this class. It was the first two weeks and they did a lot about environment, the earth, um, it was a fun class. It was a really good um, first two-week starter class, and it was called Green Champs. Then her second two weeks, um, as we did last year for the first time, we took maker space over into the basement at Marlatt. And I can't speak volumes enough um, for our appreciation to BHS Construction. They made this class possible um, from everything from all of the supplies, the wood, the graphing materials, um, the tools that they used in the classroom first to design. Um, they gave the shirts to the kiddos, those orange shirts this year, just an amazing. I would love, as we talk about partnerships, I would love for um, classes and things like this to continue because without BHS and their sponsorship, of Makerspace, the success of that class would not be possible. Next is Simulating the Martian. This happens over at the College of Engineering. Then we have Hollywood Science. Vet Med. We had to be very, very restrictive with our photos this year. Um, PETA has um, given a statement not only to Kansas State University, specifically the College of Veterinary Medicine, but nationally and worldwide. So we wanted to respect that work because we usually like to show a lot of our film on the dissections, but due to the request, we wanted to honor that. So we're very limited on our vet med photos this year. Robotics at Starbase over at the National um, Armory where we go um, during the school year and then also have the opportunity to with our summer STEM class. Then the last week is a more extensive study with robotics and engineering. 
game design. This was a new class this year with Scratch. Um, the students worked through different formulas and codings first on an iPad, and then they had to create their own video game, the old style where you approach it and have to stand and put your quarter and, and maneuver things that way. So that was fun. A little, a few of them were weren't too sure of that. The largest <laughs> photo and the young lady in the black and red dress, that was our reporter from WIBW that came out that day, um, that Monday, and did a really nice story. And then she did follow up and was at the showcase on Friday. So I haven't had the opportunity to see that film yet, but she was fun. She's a friend of STEM, so we appreciate her a lot. Movies on the Moon, this was a new class. The middle picture at the very bottom um, gives a diagram of a city if it were to be on the moon. And up in the top left corner, they had to start with the very basics of with design and schematics and then go from there. So they had a lot of guests in and out and they spent a lot of time in a few of the engineering buildings and came up with the product that they did there at the end. It was it was very fascinating. They, they did a neat job and I appreciate the creativity of those teachers. Thinking through games, um, both Dr. Brad Bernheide and Michelle Thornley uh, offer those again, the critical thinking and the really in-depth. There's, there's quite a few kids that are really interested in these two classes. We start with the level one for the fifth and sixth graders and then move up to two for our seventh and eighth graders. CSI, we can't speak volumes enough to our relationship with both the Riley County Police Department and the Manhattan Fire Department. Those individuals bend over backwards to invite us to the facilities to partner not only locally there or come into our schools, but just really neat opportunities. And you can see there um, in the top right corner, it's very hands-on. It's not watch a video or learn and watch the adults do it, but that's what we appreciate the most. They are in the crime lab in the lower left unit and then um, in the far right. That is Bingo, one of the um, state fire dogs, and he uh, works with explosives and so forth, and towards the end, they get to work right up and close with him. So that's what we really, really appreciate with our partnerships with both of those departments because they make it about hands-on. We have to keep in mind that career exploration is such a huge emphasis of STEM, and so that's what we really look at when we partner with folks outside of just our school district about what can we give the kids a taste of how they can choose to um, figure out what they want to do when they grow up. Then our seventh and eighth grade classes, um, we had Star Wars, that was a new class this year, and it was basically just engineering and design and they did that on lots of different ships and then went outside and, and tried um, trajectory and some things with rockets. This next class, if, if I was asked, and I have been a, a couple of times, what was the class that really stuck out or, or did something for a lot of the kids? And we formed a new class called WINGS and it's Wings 1 and Wings 2. And this gentleman, Lieutenant Colonel Roger Eaton, unfortunately you can't see the picture very good, but he is the squadron commander for the Civil Air Patrol here with the Kanza Composite Squadron here in Manhattan. The things that these kids got to do in the four days of this class were absolutely unbelievable. Um, all the way from partnering with uh, K-State Polytechnic they brought over their new Cessna simulator. The trailer wasn't even wrapped. Our kids were the first to be in it. Um, here they're in the Chinook and the Apache flight simulators. And I went with them in the Apache one this particular day. And it was interesting because when we got out, there was um, a class waiting to go in. It was their day to be on the simulator. So it wasn't just a game, you know, to go in and, and play. It was... It was neat. Also, it was inspiring that day because there were actually pilots in class. And for our students to see that the actual pilots were in class, I mean, it was a very good visual that, to the extent of what that meant. So cannot say enough about the Big Red One and, and our partnership with Fort Riley. So 
just, it's amazing. It's a fantastic opportunity for our kids. Get Energized was new this year. Um, it was over at Unger Hall, the old foundation building, um, specifically David Carter and the KSU Engineering Extension. He came after us and said, how do we get involved? Sat down with him a few times and met, and it was a fun, very interesting first time class. We only went one week because they um, wanted to make sure that they had a sense of, of what they were doing. They're used to being in schools or businesses just for a taste or vice versa, but having numerous students four days a week for quite a, a length of time, they wanted to make sure that they get it perfected before they roll it out. So they more than perfected it, just outstanding. Um, exploring drones, and then they added the Sephiros, excuse me, the Spheros this year. Um, it was a lot of fun. We did um, start in Ahern, but because of the excessive heat, which we have fought year after year after year, we went ahead and said we'll pay for the expense of the bus, and we ended up going over to Marlath that, that second week there. So no big deal, we just needed and there was a lot going on and it just it's hot for kids in that confined space so uh, this is our partnership with Manhattan uh, Tech with MATC this year they changed up their class to feed your head with tech ed this one here in particular was um, different things with the nursing unit and how the digestive system works here they were working on some solar cars this was a lab with sunlight and sunscreen. Then they did some, made some beads um, with some photosynthesis and solar lights. And then here they're working on so, uh, solar cars. And I think this was with the sunscreen sunlight. So this used to be fill your head, fill your toolbox. But they went ahead and wanted to give an entire taste of all the MATC has to offer and they hit it out of the park. This was week four, our only week um, and I really hope that we can look to extend that because it was it was a good class too. Uh, robotic design and programming, that's very very popular at the seventh and eighth grade level. The city of Minecraft as well. <laughs> Oh, and then here is um, the other slide with wings. This is the inside of the trailer. This is one of the um, pilot professors from K-State Polytech. They came over on Tuesdays and did this. Mm -hmm. This is the back end of the trailer. Here where I'm standing, what a photograph from is where you enter the trailer, and then there's a little bit of storage. So um, that was nice. It's a 160 horsepower Cessna 172 Skyhawk. So... Yeah, not many kids can say that they got to test fly one of those over the summer. Um, I'm going <laughs> to refrain. It was more about getting off the ground. One day I was in there, This the, the, the gentleman, he said, you know, we've got to get in the air. I'm just going to get you up. Because he, would, he or she would start on the runway, and something about that left turn and just spin and spin and spin and then the screen will eventually blur in the Apache uh, simulator it does the whole rigmarole it moves and shakes and turns and and I won't comment about that one <laughs> but anyway just fantastic experiences and then my very last slide is just a very special thank you to um, the engineering hall that allowed for us the use of this awesome main floor atrium space is what they called it um, we were able just to line tables up and down and, and have a presentation we had a snafu in the scheduling. If you'll remember last year, we reserved the student union ballroom. And we had done that last year in confirmation. Well, the College of Ed got ready to start doing some things for this summer, and it was overbooked. So then um, Dr. Todd Goodson and myself and the dean, Dean Mercer, we met, and we said, well, we'll try to do it out front at Bluemont Hall along the long corridor from Bluemont to um, leadership studies. Well, unfortunately, the fire happened, and 
the semi, the disaster semis took up that whole entire lane. So now we are at plan C. <laughs> Josh Weiss, who does Mighty Microcontrollers, who was housed out of the engineering hall, he said, hey, our facility is wide open. Talked with the dean. She said, oh, we'll just try it on a one-year basis because of the circumstances. She was so thrilled with this experience and says, why don't we try to use other facilities where we partner from here on out? So no telling where the showcase is going to end up, you know, next year when we have our third showcase. But um, just thank you so much to each of you as board members, the board members as a whole for supporting this. We did conclude our um, DODIA grant. However, um, Thanks in part to very to being very fiscally responsible and working with our fees and funds over the year. We do have enough at this time to sustain for this coming FY19 summer, and hopefully the plans that we have done in the past to secure that money will continue to follow. And we just have to be very, very creative. Dean Mercer stands that this program will not go away come heck or high water. Um, we do foot. 99.9% of the expenses on the program. And so we're not desperate by those type of means when we would really have to start figuring out who's going to pay for what and how. Um, one thing that we also are excited about, if you'll remember, this grant held us specifically to grades five through eight. We are probably going to get quite a bit more creative. We have one gentleman in particular, Pat Lamb, who's a retired science teacher that did our vet med, but he cannot wait to get high school level kids for the summer with DNA and genetics. I said, put it together, and when we start planning in January, let's roll it out. So this is all about creativity. It's not that we have to follow the standards that we do during the school year. We want to give kids a taste of STEM and the career exploration and all that can entail. So just again, thank you for your support. I'd love to do it year round. We can't, however, but maybe someday, but it's, it's good for kids. It's good for our school district and also for the university because of, of what we've built and how hard we will work to continue to sustain it. That was a lot longer than, than you had ask for, but thank you for letting me share this evening. Request Dave. Yeah. Okay. You talked to, I mean, a lot of people obviously volunteered to help with this. Do, do all the people who teach classes volunteer or some of those paid as part of the grant? The 383 staff are all stipend through the summer and then um, those that are with the College of Education, it's part of their work through the university. So it's it's volunteer hours, but I have to be here because it's summer and I'm contracted and I need to be in my office, but I'd rather work with, t with kids and teach my craft and teach my skills. So the majority of the expense comes on the salary of the 383 staff. And then the K-State student interns, those are the are taking their core classes that partner in every class, they are getting three and four hour credits for the summer class, so, yeah. And then how do you manage, if all the kids wanna take Minecraft, how do you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> when we do our signups in the spring, uh, we give the kids a selection of one through six and they have to rank, and so that's why we emphasize sign up quickly because it's gonna fill up quickly. So we, most of the times the students do get a preference. It's those classes that are not given for four weeks where we run into those problems. We would love to be able to not to have to cap it, but for example, we went three over in Minecraft and it, it hurt us just because of having the space, the facility, the computers and so forth. So we have to really pay attention to some numbers on some of those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carla? I just want to say I really appreciate the effort for the showcase to happen. We went through STEM with Jacob prior to showcase happening and and um, when you talk to your kids you don't always get a full explanation of what you did today. <laughs> yeah. So so being able to go and see what that looked like was neat and helpful for us and, and I don't have a kid in it this year but it was fun 
And it was neat because when I'm looking forward to next year, when I can sign somebody up again, right. that I have a better idea about what it is that's happening and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that that effort, um, on your behalf, on your part to make that happen. And then for everybody to show up and, and put forth those presentations is definitely well worth it for that celebration to happen. So I'm glad that you guys are doing that. Thank and you. I'll put in a plug anytime anybody will listen that I would really love for us to start looking at some um, podcasting abilities for future stuff, whether it be in STEM or in curriculum type of stuff that, okay. that melding of the technology and right. journalism and all that sort of stuff. So, okay. Thank you. But yeah, that was great. I loved it. Thanks. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lacey. And thanks for the enthusiasm for this. Oh, it is awesome. contagious. <laughs> Next for me is other good news in a different direction, but it's the application to the State Board of Education for the Capital Improvement State Aid that Eric's done a lot of work behind the scenes on that and has a report tonight about where we, we stand with it at this point in time. Yeah, just wanted to let you guys know we turned in um, both the um, excess of 14% debt service to the state as well as the state application for um, assistance on, on bond, bond and interest. They were both uh, 250 plus page documents that, that you have to put together for um, the State Board of Education. This year with bond cap, it was a little more tense than it has been in the past. So. Um, it was kind of a race at 12.01 on July 1st, and um, I, I talked to Mr. Dennis because I went and hand-delivered. Uh, we were supposed to handle or bring hard copies later, so I hand-delivered those on Monday and talked to Dale Dennis when I was there, and he said he had nine districts within 40 minutes of midnight um, <laughs> wow. applied. So as I said, you know, you didn't want to be the one left out of – what what happened along the way. So um, the, I also wanted to make sure it got through when you're sending a 250 plus page, multiple 250 plus page documents through public servers. Sometimes they don't <laughs> like the big documents, especially big documents with graphics and pictures. So I ended up sending it multiple ways, multiple times. Dale told me he had 21 emails from Eric Reed, USD 383. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you had a busy evening, didn't you? <laughs> I said, I just wanted to make sure it got through Dale. <laughs> and he said, you had 23 of them get through to me. So I um, was able to confirm that. Um, I, I will say uh, my first question, Mr. Dennis, when I got there was, where are we at on the bond cap? I know that's been a conversation we've all been concerned with, created some anxiety on our end. Um, what was turned in by all districts in the state of Kansas, there was one district that was proposing the plan that did not turn in an application on July 1st. So everybody that turned in on July 1st, they added up all the numbers and they were about 20 million shy of the bond cap. So yes. we've kind of been given the go ahead that there shouldn't be too many big steps to take um, place in there um, because one of, one of them was the date you came in. So. I, I felt good about our opportunity if we had to go head to head over need. I, I, I felt very good about where we were relative to other districts. I'm not sure why that other district did not turn in their application. I'm not sure, but I'm thankful because I think it eased a lot of stress. So it looks like um, there's every indication we should be able to go forward to election. Um, there, I believe three of those districts requested a September election. So they'll be doing one between the primaries and the general election, which I'm sure their county clerks are very happy with them. Yeah. I, oh. I'm not sure why they would do that. And I think some of the districts were asking for a January, sir. Um, so we're, we're one of the districts that asked for a November um, general election. So, uh, and, and that's kind of strange, you know, it, it, it'd be very difficult. That's not the normal process to ask for approval in July one for something you run in, January. It's also not common to ask for something July 1 that you plan to run in September. So we're, we're actually, you know, I, I felt rushed that we were probably about a month ahead of where we should have been on the normal cycle of things, but we're much closer than those districts. So I appreciate where we're at. Um, appreciate KSD and the help. Appreciate Greg Varnberg and, and Lou. Uh, we, we went back and forth all week to make sure we practiced. I wanted to make sure we could send those emails out on timers and what I needed to do and have my computer open and this program open, not closed. 
we did try multiple things to make sure it went through. So it did go through and I'm thankful for that. So we, we should be good to go. We should be up in front of the state board of education in August for approval. So great news in August to the state board. So they'll have a group going to the state board in July, which they really had to rush their way through. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll sit down and meet with KSDE, or we'll do a phone conference with them just about where we are before before that August meeting. But we should be up on 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 the agenda for the state board uh, in August. So I'll probably make my way over there for that, and I'm sure Leah might <laughs> take that assignment that day too. So. <laughs> okay, very good, Katrina. Thank you, thank you for your diligence and making sure that I got there. I felt such a relief after you said that it was in. Me too. <laughs> As you can tell, a little paranoia set in with, with Eric. I'm, I'm glad you sat there and got the numbers from him too. So it sounds like uh, yeah, we're, we're going to at least be able to pitch it to the, to the voters. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's it for me. Okay. I don't see anyone from NEA. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, she's here. Hiding. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, so Erin's not here. She is out at the uh, National Annual Representative Assembly with about 800 other, or 8,000 other um, delegates. And so she is having fun. I'm sure she'll have lots to share when she gets back. Now, she did put together this really nice presentation for you guys. <laughs> this big thank you. But you get me a sticky note. So <laughs> if you see her, let her know it was great. Um, <laughs> Just a huge thank you to everyone involved in negotiations. Um, we are so incredibly blessed in this district for the administration team and the Board of Education and, and the union to be able to work so seamlessly together. Um, frequently asked questions, of course, have to do with, with pay, and so we are very thankful for that um, vertical and horizontal movement on, on the um, pay scale and then also the increase to the base. So. That is all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right. Well, Board of Education, I kind of like the round robin, so I guess we'll start with uh, Jardine if you have something. Um, so I um, did some, just some research into some other <laughs> districts. And I found that other school districts offer, I feel like I'm super loud today, sorry. <laughs> other school districts offer um, one time a month where um, three school board members sort of have like a coffee in the community somewhere and people can come and kind of chat with them and, and get feedback and give feedback. And I, I thought maybe we should consider that since one of the things that came out of our survey data was people wanted us to kind of hear what they had to say more to get more opportunities for community feedback. Um, and so I thought even if we just signed up for, it would only be a few times a year with all of us, but um, just making that opportunity available for people to come and talk with us, even if it was just for an hour and a half or so. Um, and also I just wanted to remind people how much we were nodding our heads last meeting when, um, Debbie Ness suggested a task force for East Campus, so to make sure that that's something that we are looking at doing, because regardless of what happens with the bond issue, I still think we need to talk about what we're going to do with that building. Um, online registration, can you guys even believe that we're talking about that? <laughs> July 16th, is that the right date? Mm -hmm, um, and then the Supreme Court is going to be holding a session in are you going to say something? Go ahead. I'm going to throw one thing in there. The yeah. online free and reduced applications are already up and, oh, and on the oh. website. So if anybody wants to access those and get them done ahead of time, it's super. <laughs> if we can get them done <laughs> ahead of time. That. Very much. Um, so the Supreme Court is going to be holding a session um, at West Campus. I think September 24th is the date. Um, I will not be here. I will be um, cruising around um, on a carnival ship thinking about how I wish I was here yeah. <laughs> to see that incredible experience in person. I'm so jealous that I'm going to have to miss that. But I hope that um, 
the community can uh, come out and and really just enjoy that. I mean, just the opportunity to kind of engage in that uh, process. And then lastly, I wanted to say that um, strategic planning is going very well, and um, it's been really uh, nice to to you get to know a person when you spend 20 hours with them in three weeks. <laughs> and um, I think that we're doing some really great work and um, we're having some really tough conversations about what our district is and stands for. Um, and I'm looking forward um, to being able to roll that out um, to everybody and, and kind of show what we have been working hard on and um, kind of putting our vision and, and Dr. Wade's vision on paper for people to understand and get behind. So thank you to everybody who's a part of that. And um, I'm hoping our next meeting is our last one. Well, it's interesting tonight, reflecting back on my very first board meeting in July, 2003, um, as frustrated as I've been with the change of the election cycle, one of the things that it did was give you all a chance to kind of get on the board and get settled. The very first, very first thing we did when I was a school board member was do president and vice president elections. And there was a lot of behind the scenes kind of skullduggery that went on with that. <laughs> Um, negotiations would be a nicer term um, <laughs> and uh, so uh, I appreciate that uh, we do it differently now um, and I and I, it's nice for you all that that's not the very first thing you do as a school board member when um, and so the other thing that's changed a lot is negotiations and when I got on the board negotiations were um, brutal um, and there was an attitude of on both sides of when is winning is everything um, and it didn't even necessarily seem like it mattered much else mattered other than than winning and um, so the approach that um, we have now um, with our administrative team and with our teacher leadership team, um, I think is what's best for kids. That we approach it from a perspective of uh, how do we do, how do we approach this as partners, and how do we make this work? Um, and it's just it's better for all concerned, in my opinion. So thanks, Eric, and uh, to the teacher team, and uh, I'm, I'm just sort of slack jawed that we've already come to an agreement. I, I don't think we've ever, ever, ever come to a, an agreement this early that I can recall. Um, so pleased with that. Uh, just kudos to all the STEM people. We got a report earlier, obviously, but thanks again, Lacey, and that, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I want to also say thanks for a couple meetings ago, the presentation you brought about algebra and math. Um, I had an encounter with uh, a parent who was pretty irate, had heard, you know, a different version. And while I certainly could not <laughs> recreate <laughs> the moving pieces of that, of that presentation, I was able to basically do enough to explain to them that we aren't, we aren't harming kids' um, opportunities. If anything, we're creating opportunities for kids that might not get it. So. Um, thanks for that. I really think that's a powerful tool that we need to figure out how to get out in front of people um, more often, more frequently. Um, and the last thing I've got is, a, what is the timeline on strategic planning? Is there a, is there a set? It keeps going longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'll let that ride, yeah. then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I've got. Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Daryl, thank you for your service as board president. Um, appreciate it. I don't have much. I didn't have anything. And then I think I just want to 
piggyback on what Jardine and Darrell both said in the essence of how important I do believe and agree that communication is, is just key to what we're doing here. Transparency to the public about what we're doing um, within, within our board, within our system. And I think that that's why negotiations happen so well now. I think that, that the communication is happening out front, that people are respected, that the conversations and the processes are respected and are, are come to um, genuinely. And so I, I just kind of want to add on my, yeah, I agree what they said to that aspect of it. I think that um, making sure that communication stays on the forefront of what we're doing is really important to, to the public and then also to us and having integrity in what we do. STEM is fun. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoyed going to see the showcase. And I enjoyed what it did for my for my daughter to see her excited. And I hope that we can replicate that experiential learning in the classrooms, especially as we I, I've thought about it so much as we are doing our strategic planning and thinking about how we want to lean forward and, and challenge the status quo. So it's exciting to have um, a different model to look at. Strategic planning is um, hard and um, we've pushed each other. So I'm thankful for um, the administrators and for my school board colleague uh, who's in there with me as well as the, the teacher representatives that we've had. So not done yet, but we're just I'm putting this out there now because um, we're gonna need a lot of buy-in once we present all of this to you. So we're, we're 20 hours in, is that right? So I, yeah, it's been a lot, but yeah, still good. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, just briefly um, agree, STEM was great. It was really fun. This was the first year I've been able to go to the showcase for some reason, so that was really, not only fun, but inspiring to see the dedication, not only of the teachers, but the, um, the student teachers who were there, the K-State um, interns, they were great as well. And, and um, so that was a real pleasure. I agree with the comments that have been made about communication and transparency. And I like the idea of the coffee. And I think our first coffee clatch should be middle school math compaction. <laughs> ah, you're in charge <laughs> no no <laughs> and uh, actually I guess that's all thanks and thank you Daryl for your service this year uh, I too got to go to the, the STEM showcase so some of you on the sidelines and bits and pieces coming that was cool mm -hmm. just flat out it was, it was fun it was cool uh, really enjoyed it and I actually thought it fit well at the engineering hall Mm -hmm. uh, with everything that was going on, I thought it fit extremely well there. Uh, and with everybody that was moving around and, and talking and everything else, it was kind of nice to be on the background, not being seen and just kind of <laughs> uh, watching the kids do their thing, get excited about everything. And uh, some of the amazing things they were kind of doing. Uh, I think Lucas and I were talking that next year the spheres need to be like a boat or a submarine scenario would be kind of fun but <laughs> we're playing with our own ideas <laughs> so anyway uh, that was a great time um, the communications it's interesting I was talking to a committee member from last time and she said that uh, actually there was coffees uh, almost a weekly or a monthly coffee from one part of town to the other that they had put together and uh, in fact it was a time in which Coach Snyder was involved with the issues. I'm not sure it was the last bond or the one previous, but she's been around for a while. So, uh, but the coffee idea I thought was extremely good, and and uh, getting around the community and and letting everybody know what's going on. Um, and of course, uh, thank you for putting up with me as your president for the last year. Uh, I know I do things a little uniquely once in a while and uh, but uh, this is a great team and I really enjoyed working with you and, and uh, being able to lead it uh, you guys are great so thanks you have something you want to add Dave 
I was just going to say that um, the last bond issue, Bill and Sharon Snyder served as honorary uh, co-chairs of the the uh, yes. effort yes, committee. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Bill obviously is pretty busy with football. He, he was fall, retired at the time. But, well, that's true. But he was still <laughs> he was still busy. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they, that was more of a you know. They were they were honorary, but Sharon has done done things. She served on when we passed a sales tax for schools in two thousand five, I think it was. Um, she served on the committee that sort of we had a public committee that oversaw how we were using those sales tax funds because um, there wasn't anything in state law that said if you had your own sales tax, what you would do with the money. So we had a committee to monitor that. Just a little history. Yeah. Um, so, and speaking of which, I've kind of already started the ball rolling on recruiting Sharon to uh, join to join us. I think uh, Coach Snyder will be too busy, but uh, I think he would certainly do some uh, public service maybe announcements for us. And uh, but yeah, well, Sharon was a former teacher also, and I think one of their children's teach at uh, Bergman, if I remember right, yes. correct? Yeah. So um, great idea with the coffees. I love that idea. Um, uh, creating a task force. One one thing that I, I'm not trying to be just just to point out a fact that uh, that those uh, the community uh, services that uh, Deb had talked about at the last meeting that the school district had sold those buildings um, to those groups. Um, I'm not saying we should sell our building, but um, that's uh, those buildings are owned by anyway. That's how they're owned and managed by the uh, um, those public groups. But. Um, and I know, again, thanks for fighting back the tears, Jardine, since you're going to be gone on your uh, <laughs> your little cruise there. And, and, and you know, and I also want to mention negotiations, too, because when I first got on the board um, in 2007, um, the, uh, it, I, I jumped right onto negotiations, and, and it was completely adversarial. And, and uh, well, we even had one year where there was an impasse. We had a federal mediator had to come in and try to settle it. So it's, it's night and day. Um, now, and I appreciate that the teachers and everything. So we finally got our rebuilt our relationship with them. Um, <clears throat> you know, and so today kind of really officially kicks off our, the new year, the new school year. Um, and I know, you know, acknowledge that a lot of teachers and our faculty have been going through some professional development over summer to prepare for, uh, uh, for the next school year. Um, as painful as to talk about that, <laughs> talk about that already, but, um, uh, the community knows that, as we've all mentioned, we're working towards uh, uh, revising our strategic planning and goals um, to be reflective. Our I wrote had a little speech I wrote today <laughs> 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 to be reflective of uh, of the current and innovative learning environments and objectives. Uh, but we will continue to engage the community and uh, really encourage the community to get involved um, with the board of education and and uh, to give us feedback and and get involved, talk to our administrators and and teachers and and uh, we really look forward to uh, working with the public uh, and to get this bond issue going and, and it's exciting exciting time we got a lot of work ahead of us and just as a last factoid uh, we will be welcoming the kindergartners, kindergartners to the class of 2031 oh this year oh. so I don't want to make you guys feel old but well the, the, yeah the sure. newbies you guys are all young anyway <laughs> but anyway so yeah 2031 is the next class starting uh, this in August Okay. <laughs> Dave? <laughs> Maybe we should symbolically have you have them wheel you out and have you sit there at the end and <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, well now we're down to the uh, school finance update, I believe. No? Great. Okay. Awesome. We'll get more later. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, and we just had a uh, an information report, which is the uh, um, annual report from the foundation. Um, I don't know if anybody have any questions or comments on that. And um, the only thing I noted on it was that the Goldstein Foundation that they they're giving ten thousand dollars again for recognition of teachers uh, nine through twelve. Um, I think that was the first year last year, right? With that, those awards, the Goldstein Foundation Awards. And, uh, and it was also the, uh, was it the 10th year for the Early Expressions Art Program? 
thought that was pretty cool to mention that. Um, okay, now we're to new business, and uh, it's for, we're at the uh, Supplemental Funding Application for Cost of Living Adjustment. We have Andy Hutchinson on that, and that is in our uh, electronic black notebook, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, on page five of the uh, additional information. Good evening. Um, just presenting our um, each almost each year the federal government um, offers a cost of living adjustment for programs with the um, federal funding across the board and so this year it was last year it was one percent this year it's 2.6 percent so um, the the majority of those funds goes go towards uh, personnel costs uh, wages fringe benefits and then uh, the small amount that's left over uh, goes towards some supplies and other items. Leah? I move to give final approval to the Head Start and, <coughs> excuse me, an early Head Start supplemental funding application to provide a cost of living adjustment for 2018-2019. Motion by Leah, seconded by Carla. Any comments from the audience? Uh, back to the board, all those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have waste removal bid by uh, Matt Davis's uh, name is on that one. All right. Uh, I move to get final <laughs> approval to the bid submitted by Howie's Trash Service of Manhattan, Kansas for waste removal in the amount of $6,383.66. <clears throat> Monthly from August 2018 through July 2021. Motion by Daryl, seconded by Jardine. Anything from the audience? Come back to the board. I'll just mention I love, I appreciate your work of calculating out the uh, the differences of because uh, waste management was a little lower, but over three years they could go up four percent per year. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else from the board? All those in favor? Motion passes seven zero. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so next we have the Anthony Middle School Laser Engraver Purchase. And I don't see Vicki Klein here, so. Okay. Oh, Dave? I move to get. I move to get final approval to the bid from Depco of Frontenac, Kansas for $11,865 for the laser engraver at Susan B. Anthony Middle School. Okay, motion by Dave, second by Leah. Audience, come back. All those in favor? Motion passes 7-0. All right, moving right along here. Now we have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the new board policy, which would be uh, fundraising. Um, I think that's, uh, well, Dr. Wade is on that one, I guess. And Eric and Lou, several different people, but what what we want to do there, I don't believe there is a KASB policy for this, but we wanted to be able to spell out the parameters we have in place for clarity that we don't want fundraising occurring without administrative prior approval, and that we need to make sure that the procedures are followed in, in terms of collecting the funds, how how the funds are solicited, how they're collected, how the monies are spent, and to make sure that all of those things because we're responsible for those funds. So we want to make sure that it's done in accordance with the law. And that's, that's what this fundraising policy is designed to do. Okay. Um, Eric. Yeah. Lou, no no surprises. <laughs> Everything's on the up and up. Um, one, one emphasis on there too was the online fundraising as yes. well. We wanted to make sure we address that in there. That's becoming more and more common and, People can set those up without a lot of us knowing, and we felt like that was important for us to get a rain on. And, and this protects us, and it protects the community, and also helps protect the people that are collecting for the fundraisers, because there's there there could be this situation where they go out to collect funds for something that they're unaware that we as a district are, are already have plans for. And then it creates a scenario where the funds are coming in, We've already made a commitment to do to make a purchase. What do we do with those funds that have already come in for that purpose? So we this this allows us to have checks and balances on what we do. Leah, I have a motion. Okay, 
I move to accept on first reading new board policy DFL fundraising. Okay. Question by Leah, second by Dave. I, Comment? I want to, yes. So this was developed in house, all of this verbiage and. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for doing that. Looking at policies from other places. We, yeah, we had sample to work from. Okay. I don't know if there's anything in here that would need to be, but did we have our attorney vet this, or is there? Did not. Well, KSB. I okay. mean, we we got that through KSB policies. They they helped collect those. Okay. So I would say not our local attorney, but KSB attorneys. Good enough. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Okay. Anything from the audience? Bring it back. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. All right, got budget planning next. It's in the electronic black notebook starting on page 19. 19. Or 91 if you added that. Plug it in. Oops. It's the bond request. Cool. Okay, as yes, one. As that's counting down, we've um Close out the books for fiscal year 18. And so the first part of what I've got uh, is information for you, kind of year end closing out and so on, and kind of then setting the stage for moving forward and beginning to look at preparations for fiscal year 19 budget. Um, Obviously, when we get to the numbers at the end, the disclaimer has to come back in place for a while here. It, it still is preliminary, and, and there are estimations until we get the software, can work the numbers, and so on. Um, there is some estimates that we will have to do later on when we're actually looking and working with the software. The budget software is due to be out the mid, middle of the month is the last information we have from KSD. Uh, the budget workshops have been scheduled, and... Uh, we're still trying to decide which one is going to work best for our schedules and so on. The one we work, we're going to work, uh, go to in Salina falls on the same day as our back to school district administrative team meeting. So that's going to necessitate probably a, a change. Instead of going to Salina, you're going to have to go to El Dorado or to Shawnee Heights for a uh, budget workshop. Um, this is something that, that I just happened to come across and I thought we'd find interesting. This comes published by KSDE and was the bonds that were requested last year, fiscal year 18. And you start looking at it and you think, okay, Blue Valley's in there and there's only 800,000 against the cap. And this is Blue Valley Randolph. This isn't Blue Valley 229. This is Blue Valley Randolph. Well, so that, that amount against the cap, if you go down to the explanation below, it's only the amount that exceeds the 14% assessed valuation limit. So there are some exceptions where it doesn't all apply towards the cap uh, and that, that type of thing that can come into play. So that was the, the districts that had bond issues in the past year and the bond cap authority ended up remaining was just under $5,000. In Derby that's in there, they at one point were not in the mix to start with and had to wait till a couple of, of November issues failed before they had enough room that they could go ahead and have their election and then they did and then it passed. Uh, they, they've got a, another addition to their high school and and uh, building administrative offices and, and some other renovations uh, but that high school is getting to be what we, we called it town southeast when it was built and that was 15 years ago now and they've added on to it twice since then. Okay, here's a final report that I promised we'd bring back to you. I wasn't sure if we were going to have this tonight, but we do uh, for the final year-end transfers. We did preliminaries last week. Uh, at that point, in the general fund on top there, we had a projected transfer to contingency of a million dollars in closing out our budget authority. We had another 126776 to that. Um, and then the 
capital outlay transfer remained the same. And the figures on the right are the closing balances for those two funds at the end of, of fiscal year 18. Down below, we had projected a $450,000 transfer from supplemental general to special ed. We added 81,149.16 to that so that you get to 531.4916 for the total final transfer to special ed. And then just note, and you'll see it here in a little bit, uh, we finally stopped the downward trend of the special ed unencumbered cash balance and in fact added some some uh, balance to that at the end of this year. It's been a fight to get there. Yes, it's been a long time. It it, it was mm -hmm. crashing down for a while, it seemed like, and, and we've kind of leveled it off last year and this year actually turned it around. Okay, this is, and there are several pages of this, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but this is a worksheet that I developed that shows our scheduled budget transfers for the year, and then there's a, a page to the end that's the final year uh, year end transfers that we've talked about. The reason I wanted to sh share this with you is you can see the general fund here, we transferred a bilingual, we transferred a virtual, to special ed, to the tune of a little over $7 million, to career and post-secondary ed, CTE, four-year-old at risk, at risk. We talk a lot about in budget season, you remember the stacked graph from last week about the operating funds, general fund, supplemental general. The money goes through the operating funds and then is transferred out to support almost every other fund in the state portion of our budget. There's a few that are driven by mill levies, capital outlay, bond and interest, uh, food service gets the federal money. So there's a few like that, but most of the money comes through either general or supplemental general and is transferred out through scheduled budget transfers to fund all those other programs and funds within the budget. Here we go with supplemental general. Remember that proportional part that was in the new finance law we talked about last week? Well, bilingual, we sent 160500 to bilingual. We move on down here and we get to, uh, there's another $3 million to special ed. If we get to at risk, there's 3500000 So we more than cover the proportional part out of our supplemental general fund. So that's why I said, made the comment last week, that that wouldn't be an issue for us on that proportionality. Okay, and then here's the year-end transfers, which we've already talked about, but this is just a worksheet that helps me organize and I'm doing the book work on it and so on. Uh, but the point, like I said, was just to, to understand that the money comes through the operational funds and then is transferred on. Okay, this is, uh, again, a worksheet I wasn't sure we were gonna have ready for tonight, but this is our, kind of our cash balance sheet, if you will has our cash balance and then our unencumbered cash balance at the end of fiscal year 18. And then on the far right is the encumbrances. So basically you take the cash balance less the encumbrances and get the middle column. And think of the encumbrances as an outstanding check. There are warrants that have been written, but they haven't cleared and been paid yet. So they're in, in transit, in process, and just haven't cleared. So you can see, um, the unencumbered cash balance, like I said, is the important line. Um, general fund, you try and get down as low as you can. Some of the others, um, bond and interest right in the middle of fund 58. Again, remember that's an 18 month cycle of bond and interest. So you have to have enough on hand at the end of the year to make your September payments because you don't get any more tax dollars before that September bond payment is due. So you've got to end the year with enough to cover that. Special education in fund 30, is the same way. We don't get any special ed monies until October. So you've got to have enough money there to meet payroll June, July, August, September, those kind of things. So there's, there's again, we talked about over time, kind of the, the business cycle, if you will, in school finance. And um, it's important to understand that because there's, there's times when we get criticized for having large cash balances at the end of the year, but it's necessary for business operations in starting the year because we don't get another significant tax distribution from the state till January 20th. We get delinquent taxes in the fall and a very small piece uh, in October, but you don't get a, a large tax distribution till January 20th. You get monthly state aid amounts from the state, but those are don't, don't even equal one payroll. They're 
two, two and a half million dollars a month for us, the payrolls for four and a half million. Time you have all benefits, taxes, and everything that's involved in it. So we don't even have enough in our contingency to cover one payroll? No, we do. We do. I mean, if you look in contingency in 66, we've got, uh, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Well, the unencumbered cash balance there is 4.2. So mm -hmm. we're close. If you put them all together, I mean, if you go to the bottom line, the very bottom, we're at 25.5. I know, but I'm looking at the real contingency. But the real contingency, yes. Correct. That's a little scary. Sorry. <laughs> well, there's there's other monies that are in there that are even in the state portion of the budget. And I, I probably ought to put that together for you and just give you a number for the state portion of the budget, which would be, when I say state portion, that would be funds 12 through 69. And then anything above that, funds 70 is starting to head start and above our federal and grants. Here's some of the, the primary funds in a five-year history of the unencumbered cash balance. And so this is where we were kind of talking about the trend uh, with special ed, but there's some others in there we want to point out. Um, at risk, we had an increase this year. And again, at risk was one that had been going down. We had an increase and we'll have to make sure that we're very cognizant of using at risk dollars uh, in the upcoming fiscal year as that's one of them that's targeted for audit by the state in the years coming ahead. Um, special ed, about four up from the bottom. You can see we were at 2.8, almost 2.9 and at the end of 14 and, then, and dropped as low as 1.8 and now we're back up to 2.35. So again, uh, trying to reverse that trend. Contingency, we built up some or 4.2. Um, Part of that is we'd use monies out of contingency when it was allowed by the finance law. And part of that also, as, as, as Eric and I, and we've discussed it and so on, uh, part of that is, is planning a little bit for potentially opening a building down the road and having some funds on hand because you're not gonna get uh, new facilities waiting like we did in the last bond issue. So we're gonna have to have some capital on hand to try and deal with equipment needs and some of those kind of things and especially uh, additional salaries if that when that time rolls around so altogether uh, just in that group of funds and that doesn't include all the state funds I mean the uh, bond and interest isn't in there capital outlay isn't in there so some of them that are that are mill levy driven aren't listed there but eleven million four hundred and fifty nine eighteen and this one I'm gonna have to try and increase and and this this is This is a busy worksheet, but this is the worksheet that estimates the, the operational funds, the general fund and local option budget. Basically, if you get up in uh, the first upper left where it's got the audited 920 figures, there's your, your audited headcount. And so that number that ends up coming down, the 6327.1, that's our base enrollment number that is determined by last year's enrollment or there's a formula for prior year and three year average, some things like that, that's a piece of it. But that's the one that's set. That number will not change. So the way the law reads now, it used to be that number was a guess. We would pull down that 100 from up above where it says preliminary increase. We'd pull that down and add it to, and it was, it was your best guesstimate. Now it's a set number, so that number is set. As you go down the worksheet then, all the numbers that are in the, in the gray area on the, on the column on the left, those are, will be driven by our actual enrollment counts in those categories and those weighted areas based on September 20th and audited counts. So we do have to do some estimations on those, some guesstimates, our best guess, that, you know, is that risk gonna go up? Is bilingual gonna go up? The numbers that are in there right now are audited numbers from the spring. So as we get the budget worksheet, and we start looking at that, we'll have some conversations and make some adjustments there. So that's one of the things that moves the numbers that I always talk about. Uh, and then it goes through, basically there's a formula, and in some of these, there's more to the formula than it looks. Uh, for example, uh, real quick, vocational ed, it says 749.5. Well, that's the number of hours you have. So that's divided by six, 
and then taking times the 0.5 weighting to get to the 62.5. So some of them are, there are some things in the background, formulas that you can't all see, so it doesn't look real clean, but you just have to understand how the worksheet works. Um, in transportation, there's a density factor, and that changes from year to year based on things. And so that's another thing that until we get the software, you don't know what that multiplier. Right now it's 0 0.132. Well, that, that changes a little bit every year. So there's things like that that change. But all told, uh, and then your special ed wedding down here at the bottom, that has also, um, the per teacher allotment has increased for this year, which helps. Uh, but you always have to try and make sure you put enough in there that you don't have to republish your budget because of special ed. So you do inflate that number a little bit to make sure that doesn't cause you to, to republish. But all told, work through it. And uh, if you get over towards the bottom right, on the far right column, the general fund authority would increase about 2.9 million, which is that's been what KSD estimated all along once the, the latest bill had estimated. Our local option budget would go up by about 542,000 if we stay at 33% and choose to use the full authority. That doesn't mean we're going to, but that's what it would. And again, that's the biggest estimate probably because that one's hard to project because uh, there's many pieces of that formula that uh, so it changes a lot when the software comes out. So for a total of about 3.4 in um, new funding available, if all of those are right. Now last year within general fund, I think I was within a little over $12,000. So I got pretty close last year with, with the estimates. I, I think the general fund number is a lot, a lot uh, closer than, than what the local option number would be at this point. But this, this is a, a pretty complicated worksheet to manage that I inherited from my predecessor and have tweaked over the years, but it, <laughs> but it, it works well and, and mirrors the budget document pretty well. And that's all I have. And if there's questions on any of that, I'd be happy to address those. Dave. So what are we doing at the next meeting? <laughs> at the next meeting, we should have uh, I don't know how long I will have had the software, but we should be able to give you pl first projections of mill levies or estimates of mill levies, uh, look at how that would affect property taxes and some of those type of things. And, uh, and then, of course, by the August 1st meeting, we'll have the budget worked up and ready for you with, with final numbers. If there's other specific pieces of information you want us to bring forward for the next meeting, uh, be happy to do that. We're really hoping we have that, Dave, from what they've told us, though, coming out. You know, if it comes out at the 15th, like they're talking about, that's three days to prep. And I know he's ready to go, gray guns, whenever whenever it happens. So that'd be best case scenario that we'd have some information. Um, but, I, but I know Mill Levy is an important conversation for us to have, and that's kind of what we'll focus in on. Right, Dave. I haven't read the ins and outs of the new formula. We got pushed up to doing the maximum on LOB in part because they were essentially forcing us to do that to keep certain kinds of funding. Is, are we do we continue in that situation, or do we have the option of lowering the LOB if? things are falling I think the option is there if we if we chose to that we could could look to back off of that a little bit and and we would still be fine um, if you look at some of our ending cash balances this year and those type of things now is there things we want to do and things we need to be ready for in the future you know there's two sides to that sure. but is the opportunity there if, if we choose to look at that yes so there's no requirement in the new formula that says if you don't no. go max, you lose some matching funds or something no, like no, that? No, okay. no. No, and uh, at that time as well, something that comes out that Lou, like Lou said, that's kind of a moving target is the state aid on our LOB can, can affect that mill levy significantly. It can also affect what actually that in, in balance is on LOB. So there's there's a lot of factors that 
float in there. I mean, that could come by favorable or it could surprise us and not. So, but, but I think it's always our goal to show you options either way and show you what we're looking at either way. Well, I think the obvious considerations are we're asking, making a big ask on a bond issue. It's going to raise the bill. That'd be a lot. Um, and I think while we know the extra money that we've gotten this year doesn't really do a lot extra, if anything, hardly really extra for us, I think that's a, we're going to have to be on our toes and be ready to explain right. why that is. And if we don't lower the regular, the mill levy sum on our regular budget, um, why, why we didn't. Um, when we're getting all this new money and we're making this big ask. So I'm not, I'm not laying out a position one way or the other here for myself. I don't know the numbers. We there's still a lot to learn, but mm -hmm. those are the, you know, flying at 30,000 feet. Those are the considerations that we're going to have to go through. And I know probably everybody knows that, but communication and transparency, that's what this board's going to have to wrestle with. Leah. I appreciate Dave comments, Dave's comments, and he can probably see where this is going because you may remember that last summer I was pretty, um, pretty adamant about not, not lowering our mill levy because, you know, I would like to see us be visionary about what we can do. Your point is well taken about we're asking the voters for an increase and we need to be able to explain it and if we and if we don't lower our overall mill levy we need to be able to explain that and and i agree with that I, you know i i am still philosophically opposed to lowering our mill levy and i will be happy to take whatever meetings or phone calls people need to hear that from me or others but um i still while i acknowledge the concerns uh i think it would be short-sighted for us to lower our overall mill levy because it will it will harm what we can do for kids you know we can we can talk about paying taxes and how much we hate paying taxes but you know what do we what are the services that we get for those taxes what what will that mill levy help us do for our kids and that's what i hope that this community will be able to focus on and i think with with the help of this board and a lot of communication and transparency we'll be able to do that Thanks, Leah. One, one point just for consideration or clarification is anything, any mill levy that would come from the bond issue is not going to be in the F FY19 budget. That would not be effective until the FY20 budget. So the budget that we are considering is not going to be impacted. Now, the perception of those kind of things of the community and that, that I mean, that, that's a player, obviously. But as far as the actual mill levy for bond and interest, it's not going to be a would not be affected until the earliest fiscal year 20. Okay. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So that's the end of our regularly scheduled programming. Um, next, me next meeting, we have a budget development again, um, Head Start Federal Report, Classified Handbooks, uh, Food Service Annual Report, um, Nothing in our future meeting items. Uh, just as a reminder to the public, we have uh, online registration opens on uh, um, July 16th, and this is the first year that you will be able to register and pay online. Um, and then uh, central enrollment would be July 27th. The second year? Yeah, we did it last year. But it wasn't fully, there was something we weren't, didn't quite. Everything, everything worked last year. And I did summer school okay. on Starbucks Ed. Well, did great then. So second year. <laughs> Dose, okay. Yes. I think we were a little nervous on the reduced. Right, yeah, Scarcity. so that came up. Okay. <laughs> well, very good. So then, and then Central Enrollment is July 27th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's all hands on deck. But hopefully that, that'll uh, decrease over, it depends on how the enrollment goes this year. Um, and uh, I think that brings us to the end. We have an executive session. Mr. President, I move that we go into executive session for 10 minutes. Is that going to be plenty? Okay. To discuss negotiations pursuant to the exception for employer-employee negotiations under Kansas Open Meetings Act 
And that we will return to open session in this room at... Anybody need a break? Anybody need a break? Okay. Uh, 8.05. And Dr. Wade and Eric Reed will join the board in executive session. Do have a second? Dave seconded. All those in favor? Hey. Best. <laughs> 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 old habits, old habits, what I say. <laughs> and you made the most.